Good morning and Merry Christmas. Welcome to this worship service of Ada First United Methodist Church on this beautiful Christmas morning. My name is Reverend Brandy Rigsby and I wanna welcome you all to this live stream of our Christmas morning worship service. I'm thankful that we can gather by this means, even though we may not be in person, but to be able to um, come at your own comfort, maybe at home in your jammies, sharing this time together as a family, but to worship together, no matter where we are or what we're doing. I do have a couple of announcements to offer as we get started and some reminders. As I remind you each week, please remember to check the church Facebook page and web page for ongoing announcements and reminders. We will have in-person worship on next Sunday, January 1st, for the new year. So we'll be bringing in the new year together right here in worship at 10 a.m. And now, friends, I'd like to invite us all to lift our hearts in worship. As we do today, we remember the birth of our Savior. God has come among us as one of us. Will you join me in an attitude of worship? Good morning and Merry Christmas to everyone. Will you please join me in the call to worship? The Spirit is coming to bless us all with a new song. Let our joy be complete. Gifts for the good of all poured out on all to teach us a new song. Love one another. Strangers and neighbors, foreigners and family will join in the new song no longer servants but friends come let our worship make a joyful noise rejoicing in the friendship of god let's lift our voices together to sing our opening hymn hark the herald angels sing
Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that we no more may die, born to raise us from the second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Our scripture reading is from Isaiah 52, 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of a messenger who proclaims peace who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God rules. Listen, your lookouts lift their voice. They sing out together. Right before their eyes, they see the Lord returning to Zion. Break into song together, your ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted his people and has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in view of all the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen our God's victory. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesse's lineage coming as those of old have sung. It came a flower at bright, on pitch the cold of winter, when half spent was the night. Isaiah was foretold. I'd like to invite our children to listen in closely as Miss Wendy shares our children's moments with us. Good morning, friends, and Merry Christmas. This is a day we've been waiting and preparing for. How exciting. I wanted to share today with you some of my very favorite Christmas things. And as you can see, I have my little Christmas tree here. And I just love the lights of Christmas. And so I've got my Christmas tree and Christmas lights, and I'm going to show you a few other things that I just totally love about Christmas. So presents, of course, we all love presents. And then every Christmas time, I get to set up my snowmen on my fireplace. So I have a big collection of snowmen, and they're just really cool and cuddly. And I also started a collection of Christmas gnomes, and this guy's my favorite. But I have a few of those that I set up. And 
of course, the Christmas clothes. Now, I don't have an ugly sweater on, but I did bring my hat today. So I have my Christmas hat. And then, of course, my stocking. Um, I love to see what comes in it in the morning. So that's one of my favorite things. And then watching movies. I love watching movies. Now, I didn't bring any of my favorite Christmas foods because we ate them all. So um, I don't have any of those there. Those are my absolute favorite things at Christmas time. And I mean, I just wanted to share those because I just think everybody loves those things, right? But I think maybe we're missing a little something. And I just noticed it in the bottom of my bag. We kind of missed an important thing. I don't know if you can see him, but I brought the baby Jesus here. And this is from the nativity set. And you noticed I brought baby Jesus out last. And that's because sometimes the decorations and the costumes and the music and movies and food, those are so fun and magical that sometimes they distract us from the real reason that we're celebrating. And that is the birth of Jesus and what it means to us. And, and even though these are fun, magical things and we should enjoy them and enjoy time with our family and friends, we should remember that the most magical gift and the most magical thing that we're here to celebrate is Jesus's birth. So if you could please pray with me today. Dear Lord, we are so thankful for the magical gift of Jesus that you have given to us. And we are so grateful that he will become a sacrifice for us to save us so that we can live with you forever. Happy birthday, Jesus, and in your name we pray. Amen. Our second scripture reading is from Psalms 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, because he has done wonderful things. His own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Be happy, rejoice out loud. Sing your praises. Sing your praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of music, with trumpets and a horn blast. Shout triumphantly before the Lord, the King. Let the sea and everything in it roar, the world and all its inhabitants too. Let all the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains rejoice out loud all together before the Lord, because he is coming to establish justice on the earth. He will establish justice in the world rightly. He will establish justice among all people fairly. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, again, good morning and Merry Christmas. I hope you are all having a very blessed and joyful Christmas morning. Weren't both of those worship services on Christmas Eve wonderful? To see the joy of the children as they helped to tell the story of Jesus' birth was such a blessing. And then to stand from this point of view and to look out over your faces, illuminated by candlelight. And as we sang together the words of Silent Night, it was simply beyond description. So I want to say thank you to each and every person, to the care and the love that you have given through the Advent season and for helping to make Christmas Eve such a memorable and joyful celebration. And now today, as you're gathered with family and friends, I pray that you can continue to find joy in all the moments of the day. 
in the big moments and in the small moments, may you be reminded just how much God loves you. For today, God has come among us as one of us. And because of that, our world will never be the same. That is the message of Christmas. Jesus was born then, but Jesus is also born now. From eternity to eternity, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And in that moment, both then and now, everything has changed. And when that message begins to rise up in our hearts, we can't help but sing praise to God. As we extinguished those candles last night, as we lifted our hearts in praise and sang the words of a beloved Christmas hymn, I was reminded of the call God has placed on our lives. Let me share with you again the words of that hymn. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world is one of those hymns that echoes through the air on Christmas Day. It names that overwhelming joy and celebration that we feel as we remember the gift of love and the gift of life that God gave to the world on this day. But did you know that the song Joy to the World was never actually intended as a Christmas song? In fact, it doesn't even mention the nativity. No Mary and Joseph, no shepherds or angels, no wise men. Simply lyrics about the earth receiving her king. Joy to the World was written in 1719 by Isaac Watts. Watts grew up in the church, the son of a pastor. And as his story goes, Watts found most church music to be boring and uninspired. He explained it like this. He said to see the dull indifference, the negligent and thoughtless air that sits upon the faces of the whole assembly. While the psalm is on their lips, it might even tempt a charitable observer to suspect the, the fervency of their inward religion. Ouch. You see, young Watts would complain often to his father about the music of the church. And his father, growing tired of hearing his son complain, finally said to him, if you don't like it, write something better. And young Isaac said, challenge accepted. He went on to write more than 750 hymns over his lifetime. And the majority of those hymns were shaped by the words of the Psalms. Joy to the world, in particular, conveys the message that we just heard from the 98th Psalm. I also learned that the lyrics of Joy to the World were originally sang to the tune of Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. But a student composer wrote a melody intended to be much more joyous and upbeat. But perhaps even more extraordinary is how this hymn's lyrics trace the redemption story throughout history, weaving God's promise from the garden through Christ's second return. The words we sing echo our belief in God's redemptive work from generation to generation, and the promise that there is still redemption to come. You see, we are singing praise not just for the Christ of Christmas, but also for the Christ of our eternal salvation, because Christ is come. And because of Christ's coming into our world as one of us, we are called to rejoice now and always. Now I know 
it's easy to talk about joy on Christmas Day. But the words of the psalmist are clear. God is worthy of our praise always. It may seem naive in a world of grief to choose to live in joy and celebration. It may seem foolish in a world of pain and heartache to sing in praise to God. It may seem cruel in a world of suffering to speak of light and love. But Jesus came. Jesus comes to bring joy into our grief. Jesus came and comes to bring light into our darkness, to bring singing into our mourning. And it is an act of healing and redemption to embrace that joy and that hope, the hope of Christmas. Friends, today we sing out with joy because the Lord has come. But it doesn't have to end here. It doesn't have to end at 11.59 tonight. Our joy, our hope rests in the promise that God is still with us. It rests in the promise that God's redemptive work is still happening in this world and in our lives right at this very moment. God is still bringing good news to the lost and forgotten. God is still bringing freedom to the captive. God is still bringing healing to the hurting and victory over death to the dying. And most of all, God is still bringing restoration to all of creation. Brothers and sisters, through the gift of Jesus Christ, God is with us. God is with us here and now and forevermore. And we have reason to celebrate. We have reason to praise. We have reason to live in hope. And we have reason to cry out with joy. For the Lord is here. Let us pray. Loving God, the whole of creation declares your glory. The whole of humankind is singing your praise. For today, heaven's door has been opened. A child has been born, your son given to us. Today, O oh God, sinner, and creator are reconciled once more. So today we lift our hearts. We lift them in celebration and joy for the birth of our Savior. Mighty God, let us receive our King today and forevermore. Amen.
friends, as we enter into this time of prayer. May we come with the assurance that God's promises have come true this day. That truly God is with us. God hears the words of our mouths, the cries of our hearts. So may we come listening for God's voice. May we come knowing that God hears us. Will you join me in an attitude of prayer? God of hope and salvation, you are our light shining in the darkness. We give praise that you are the light of love that came into our world through the birth of Jesus Christ. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Through your Son, you created everything that is seen and unseen. Father God, through your Son, you gave us life, and you have given us eternal life. Today, this is the good news. For those of us who have sometimes grown so familiar with this news that it begins to sound like old news, we pray, O oh God, that you would stir within our hearts, that you would renew our sense of wonder. Mighty God, astonish us once more with the gift of your love. Kindle hearts that have grown cold. Help us to feel within our being these good tidings of great joy. And help us to know without a shadow of doubt that a baby has been born to us this day. In the city of David, a Savior has been born. But we also come, Lord, recognizing that all too often we fall short of the call you have placed on our lives. Lord, when we allow darkness to overcome light, forgive us. When we reduce Christmas to plastic and tinsel, forgive us. When hardness of heart keeps us from seeing and hearing and touching the needs of others, forgive us. When our caring is not extended to action, forgive us and move us. We confess to you, O oh God, our sinfulness. We pray for your mercy to fall over us. Pour out your grace upon us and open our hearts once more to your redeeming love. And now, Father God, as people who have been forgiven and redeemed, we pause in this moment and we lift to your ears those prayers that we carry with us. We lift up Molly, Clint, and Jude. We pray for strength and courage for each day. We pray that your arms of compassion and love will uphold them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift up Joan Kempton as she continues to be cared for in hospice care. Lord, may your spirit hold her close. May you bring relief to her pain. May you give her comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also lift up Jean and Laura Smith, Nancy Fleming, Louise Miller, Gary Clausen, Sherry Evans. We lift up all those who we hold in our thoughts and prayers. Lord, we pray that you will surround them in your love, that you will bring healing and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also lift up to you today those who are facing fear of what lies ahead. For them we pray for peace. We lift up those who are dealing with grief and heartache this time of year. 
For them we pray for comfort. And for those, O oh God, to whom joy seems distant, we pray for the inbreaking of your love and your grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for always hearing our prayers. We ask that you would give us now courage to live as people of the light. Those who find your comforting, encouraging presence in our lives at all times. Kindle your spark within us that together we may shine forth your light. And remind us now and in the days ahead that the work of Christmas has only just begun. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now may we lift our voices together in praise as we sing our closing hymn, number 246, Joy to the World. walked in darkness have seen a great light. Light has been given where once there was only darkness and hope where once there was only death. For unto us this day a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Love has broken in upon us. Therefore, let us go into the world with joy to tell of God's salvation for all. Thanks be to God and Merry Christmas.